In this video, we're making trash terrain. What is going on guys and girls? Welcome back to the channel, my name is Graham. And for you guys that are new, welcome, grab a pew. So today in this video, we're gonna be making some terrain out of bits and bobs and rubbish around the house or things that you would just normally throw away and seeing if we can make them into usable terrain for the tabletop. This video actually came about from when I was moving house and I was going through all your stuff like you do, you're throwing stuff out. And I found these weird inserts that uh, go inside a box that holds like a DVD player in place inside the box so it doesn't like shake about without using loads and loads of foam these cardboard inserts and I thought hey actually they look like kind of power generator kind of thing kind of esque so I thought why not make them into power generators for the tabletop from there they sat in my cupboard for ages for a couple of months uh, until I rediscovered them uh, when I was sh shuffling through some bits and bobs and rearranging things as you do and I thought hey why not make a video so the idea isn't to make like the best uh, tabletop terrain out of what we have. It's just to make some simple terrain out of bits and bobs. It doesn't have to be absolutely fantastic, it just needs to look pretty good on the tabletop so we can enjoy our game so it's a little bit more immersive. So with that said, let's get started. So these little inserts you can see, I've got these little flappy bits on the edges. So what I do, I just take my X-Acto knife and I just cut them all off all the way around. At this point, your X-Acto knife doesn't need to be a brand new sharp one. This one's actually quite an old one. It's just to get all those flashy bits off that you don't want when you stick it down to the base. At this point, I didn't like the look of just sharp edges of the cardboard. So I just rounded those off as well, just so it was a little, a little bit neater. So for the base, I have this old bit of foam core. It'll be strong and light. It's really easy to use. It's really easy to cut from the cardboard inserts that's going to be my power generators, just so I can have a little bit of the ground covering, a little bit of grass and, on the base. Nice and easy, just mark it with a Sharpie and then cut with your X-Acto knife. On this part, it is more useful to have a nice sharp X-Acto knife. Cuts through the foam board a lot easier. It saves you getting these little flicky bits around the edge that I got a bit later. Now everything was going really smoothly at this point up until I noticed that the cardboard inserts I was using uh, flick up ever so slightly at the edges. This was actually a really easy fix. All I did is put the PVA glue down on the underside of the cardboard inserts, centered it on the foam core, and then put a weight on top. In this case, I used a couple of really heavy books, one being the eighth edition rule book, and just went around and pressed down those little flicky up bits. Next bit, nice and simple, get your nice sharp X-Acto and just round off those corners of the base. For this, my actual X-Acto knife's blade was the last one I had. So I got a Stanley blade and just did it with that. And, and because it's bigger, I managed to scrape down the edge quite easily without much fuss. But you do have to be careful with this. You can see mine is quite wobbly in places. So I had to go back and neaten those up a bit later. Also, at this point, I should say you don't need to use the exact products I'm using. Say the foam core for the base, you can use cardboard or anything that's lying around the house. This is just something that I had to hand from an old project, but there's loads of different products you can use for basing, so you don't need to use the exact same thing I'm using. Next, just to fill out the base a little bit, I got some plaster. Now, this is just bog standard plaster. I got the powder form but you can go get like a polyfiller if you're in the UK or if you're in America, I think it's called Spackle. Any kind of just cheap wall filler or hole filler is absolutely perfect for this. So what I did to give it more of a texture on the base, all I did was smear it across the base evenly, making sure that some places aren't really thick and some places aren't really thin. At this point, I did add sand around the edge just to give it a little bit more texture. Now, hindsight being 2020, I don't think I should have done this and in future I think I'm, what I'll do is wait until the plaster's dry and then PVA glue the sand on later then seal it. I thought I'd try and skip a step by adding the sand now and letting the plaster act like glue to hold it down. Actually later on most of it came off when I was actually sanding down the main piece of terrain so it was pretty much null and void. So 
I thought the cardboard looked too rough. So I had a load of the plaster left over from the basing. So what I did was take that plaster and smooth over the cardboard. I only did this roughly and then once it dry, the next day took it outside and sanded it all down. I actually did two layers of this. So once it was all dry, sanded it down, put more of the filler on it, let that dry and sand it all down again. The aim was to try and get it as smooth as possible, especially inside those ridges. I didn't get it as smooth as I wanted. The concrete bits look like concrete. I'm fine with that. Plaster didn't come out as smooth as I wanted to because the grooves are quite narrow at places and I was wearing gloves and I've got sausage fingers. I couldn't quite get it as smooth as I, I would like with the sandpaper on the second run through. It still kind of looked like concrete. If this was a proper piece of terrain I was making, I would go down the grades of sandpaper until it was really fine and then some wet and dry to really try and get a good smooth surface. As this was just a quick and easy terrain piece for the tabletop, I wasn't too worried. Now with the sanding, because cardboard is quite fibrous, in the places where I only had a thin layer of plaster, you can see where I've caught the cardboard with the sandpaper and made it almost furry. I was a little gutted with that outcome, but I wasn't gonna go in with a third batch of plaster and do it again. With the plaster all nice and sanded and smooth, apart from the furry bits, I moved on to priming. All I did, black primer through my airbrush all over until you can't see anything of what's underneath anymore. If you don't have an airbrush, don't worry. Use rattle cans or normal spray cans, just exactly the same thing. I would recommend doing it outside though. So now everything was nice and primed, I wanted to try and do something that I saw on Luke APS, and that's over a black base coat, dust white paint over the top, like a zenithal highlight. He manages to get a really good concrete look to his buildings. Now I gave it a go, but I think I put a little too much white paint on, so it looks really white on top. So in the end, I just used it as like a zenithal highlight proper. Now, here comes the bit I absolutely love about terrain. You don't need really expensive acrylic paints on terrain whatsoever at all. Doesn't matter what terrain you're making whatsoever. Well, unless it's plastic terrain that you've bought for it, say like GW or anything like that. But when you're making terrain at home yourself, best thing to do is grab the tester pots from places like B&Q or Homebase. A couple of quid each pot, you get loads and it'll last forever as well. There's no point in wasting expensive acrylic paints from the hobby shop. Apart from the primer, everything on these little ones that I've done, and the plasma glow actually. So apart from the plasma glow and the primer, all this is just cheap tester pot paint. And that's exactly the same as my modular cliffside terrain as well. So don't waste your expensive hobby paint on this kind of terrain. Don't use your expensive brushes. Don't use your expensive brushes because you will ruin them. I've got an old makeup brush of my other halves that she's kindly lent me. And it's just nice and simple dry brushing. So I get my dark gray first of all, and then do like um, a wet dry brush almost. Take some of it off on a paper towel. You don't want it wet, but you don't want it like a, a traditional dry brush. You want it somewhere in between. In this case, I went over the old thing. I did add a little bit more to the tops just where it'll be lighter, and a little less around the edges where it'll be darker, just to accentuate that light effect a little bit more. I'm not 100% sure if that worked, but that's what I did anyway. Next, you wanna do exactly the same thing with your light gray, Go over the whole thing again, making sure you're getting the places where you think it would be light with a little bit more and a little bit less where you think it'd be dark. This second time round, you want to do a normal dry brush. A couple goes over with that. You wanna do a couple of passes with the, with the light gray, just so you can get good coverage. So just keep in mind where you think would be dark and where you think would be light when you're going over with the dry brush. Next bit, nice and easy, dry brush with your highlights just over the top. Now at this point, I wanted to put shade over the whole thing, but I was running out of my black wash, my null oil, there's barely any left in the pot. So I thought I'd give a go at making my own. So what I did was a little bit of black paint, a little bit of water and a little bit of flow improver, mixed it all in a pot and it worked reasonably well. Some people I've heard use a drop of washing up liquid. I just used a little bit of uh, flow improver and it seemed to work quite well. The one thing I would do in next time is get myself some ink instead of paint. The reason because the pigment of ink is a lot higher than the pigment of paint. So you're not thickening up with paint, but you're getting that pigment that you're looking for. Once your highlight dry brushing was done, that was it. All the concrete was all done. 
of the next part is on to that plasma glow. And I thought as ninth edition is coming up and Necrons are getting a lot of love, I thought I'd do a nice Necron green. So to get a like a plasma glow color, it was really easy. It's basically three colors and then white. So all I did was a dark green, a medium green, a yellow, and obviously the white on top. So I started with in between the three columns, I wanted there to be where my plasma was. So I got my airbrush and base coated those two areas in the dark green. It took a couple of layers. It took me three or four attempts to get a good opacity, but I did get a good opacity in the end. You don't actually need to use an airbrush for this. All of these parts that I used an airbrush for, you can just use either spray cans or just a normal paintbrush. Don't think you need to use an airbrush just because I am. All of these parts that I do use an airbrush, you can use spray cans or paintbrush. Airbrushes for me just speed up the process. So once I'd got a good opacity with the dark green, I took the medium green, went over the top of the green again but this time not quite going to the edges, keeping more centralized with my paint. Another thing I did to get that glow effect as well was to start focusing on the middle, on the top portion of where I wanted the plasma glow. So further down the plasma glow, it looked like it was almost cooler in effect. Once that was dry, exactly the same thing, but with the yellow, but even smaller, focusing more in the middle. What you're looking for is a build up or a transition of color. So from dark to light. So the bottom is darker and the top is lighter. You don't want to cover up the previous layer of paint completely. You want that to be seen around the edges. This will get you a really nice glowing effect. Once the yellow was done, I just went over the tops of the middle with a little bit of white and that was the plasma done. Now, plasma emits light, so I thought this would be a really good opportunity to do a really nice OSL. Nothing flashy, really simple. All I did was get my airbrush, thinned it down a little bit more than what I did with the base coats, and just went over the edges where I thought the plasma would glow, on the edges of those three columns, and then a little bit on the floor where the edge of the plasma glow stops. I built that up until I was happy with the opacity. I didn't want it to be completely opaque. I wanted the concrete to show through a little bit, so I stopped about halfway, and that's where I was happy with. Next, I got the medium green and did exactly the same thing, but a little bit less, more centralized to the corners of those columns. And I left it at that. I was happy with that little bit of plasma glow. The last bit to do was just the base. Now, with the base, I didn't want it to look exactly like the concrete. So what I did was I got a selection of my washes and with a big brush, I just dipped in and spread them all around the base in random patches. In places I mixed them, in places they're just pure color, but I covered the whole base with the washes. Once the washes were dry, I got a light bone color and just dry brushed that over the top for a nice highlight. Picks out all the details really quick. It'll be done in about five minutes. Now at this point, you can just leave it. We're all good to go to get it on the table. But I wanted to do a little bit more and I have some static grass from Citadel. I usually use just the, the little clumps of grass that has a little bit of uh, glue on the bottom where it comes on sheets. I can't quite remember what they're called, but I usually just use them for basing. But in this case, because it's a larger base and there's more to it, I thought it would be a good opportunity to use some static grass. But first off, I got a, uh, a washed down brown paint and put it around in splodges where I wanted to put the grass. This is the point where you can cover up the mistakes you made, either dry brushing or you knocked a bit of the plaster off. Those little mistakes you can cover up really easily with the static grass. So once the brown splodges of paint were done, all you do is get some PVA glue and put it around on those brown painted areas. They're gonna be your bits of mud where grass is grown. If you really want to, you can grass the whole thing. But I wanted this more so if it was on an urban terrain, it looked like it would fit a little bit more, but also if it was on a traditional battlefield, it could fit in there as well. Now, before I put the static grass on, I've got a couple of pieces of paper and just put them underneath so anything that falls off, I can catch and put back in the pot later so I don't waste a thing. So I don't have a static grass applicator or anything like that. All I did was use my hands. So what I did was once the PVA glue was on, I just sprinkled it really lightly until all the PVA glue was covered to try and help the, the grass to stand on end. For the most part, I think I did quite well at this actually. It looks all right, but I do think having a static grass applicator will work better in the future. The key here is to make sure you've completely covered the PVA so you can't see it. Don't worry about wasting your flock or your static grass. That's why we put the paper underneath. So anything that we tap off, we can just pop back into the pot later on. And I think it looks really good. This is the first proper time I've actually done any flocking or used static grass. 
So I'm really happy with how it came out. I might use a little less. I think the actual amount I used in this case is a bit much, but uh, for how it looks, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And then my terrain was done. For just a quick, nice and easy terrain build for your tabletop, I'm actually really happy with them. Are they perfect? No. <laughs> They're made out of rubbish in the end. The bits and bobs that I had around the house. But for just like a little bit of terrain, just to make our games at home look a little bit better than a stack of books and a sheet thrown over, I think they look all right and I'll definitely be using them in my next game. So that was how I built some nice and easy terrain pieces out of rubbish that I had at home. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you guys at home have just as much fun building your terrain pieces out of stuff that you can find around the house as I did. And just remember, have fun with it. If it goes wrong, don't worry. It's just bits of cardboard that we found. Stop, figure out what went wrong and give it another go. At the end of the day, we're all learning and you have to start somewhere. Am I mega happy with these ones that I made? No, there's bits that I know I can improve on and they're the little bits I'll be working on next time I make something from scratch. So that's it for another video guys. I hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I am making them. Thanks for tuning in at Burn Aquila Painting. If you're enjoying what I'm doing here at Burn Aquila Painting, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you won't miss anything else. And if you really enjoyed the video, give it a little like. It helps me get this channel out there. Also remember to leave a comment down below about my luscious new locks. <laughs> Maybe we'll really do that. <laughs> also, remember to leave a comment letting me know what you think of the video. If you're new, just say hi. It's great to see so many people enjoying the videos. And thank you to everyone who's subscribed. I can't thank you guys enough. And until next time, peace.